Right, so we're doing pumpkins. We're not doing a big one like this. We are probably doing a small one like that. And for this, we're using our pumpkin pack which I'm going to open and I'll show you the goodies that are inside. And if you're wondering why there's so much white, I will let you into the secret. Just stay here with me and um, I'll show you uh, um, our instructions as well. So you get an idea of what our instructions look like. And um, I will also show you how to put a little face on the pumpkins as well. So that's the project for today. You can have a friendly little face. You can have a, um, a slightly sinister little face. Or you can have a gross face with green snot coming out of the noses. So, um, or you can have them without face. They don't have to have face. We're doing um, a, a face. We're doing a small one. But if you want to scale it up into a slightly bigger one or even bigger than that, then um, that's really easy to do because, as you know, with needle felting, small things can easily be scaled up into larger things. Complicated. So, I'm going to have a quick look who is here today. If you are watching this um, not live, then. Um, you can just sort of scroll forward and get to the exciting bit if you're not excited about people who are here. But I think there's quite a few of you here, so that's really lovely to see you all. Helen, Mo, um, Faith um, is there, of course. I'm not going to read everything you're saying, but I will just skim through it. Um, Carol is there. Hello, Carol. Um, Jane is there. Hi, Jane. Um, Diane is there. Um, yes, I did enjoy my knitting. Thank you for asking, Diane. I um, I loved it so much, and I can't um, well, I can't wait to show you all what I've done. If for whatever reason this video is um, buffering, let me know, and I'll try and um, change things here. Um, oh, Carol is uh, in Ireland. The sun is just out now in Ireland. It's about 21 degrees, going up to 23. Well, I won't even tell you. Struggling wearing um, a top. I want to I want to take this off, but I thought. It wouldn't look very autumnal and harvesty if I'm sitting here with a spaghetti top on. Um, so we've got um, Alicia um, is there. Hi, Alicia. Oh, well, or Alicia, as she's known to everybody else. I'm, I'm always saying it wrong. Hi, Deb. It's hot with you as well. Um, hi, Rachel. Oh, oh, Daniel watching the snooker upstairs, feeling a bit sorry for his self, himself as he has an infection in his wisdom tools. Ooh. Ouch, um, toothache, toothache is uh, nasty. Chandra is there, hello. Oh, and she's watching from the airfield. Well, I'm glad you're not watching from the aeroplane because I'm not sure that's safe, especially if you're the pilot. Um, Sandra is there, hi Sandra. Laura is there, I think that's a hot face you're showing us there. Carol, oh no, I've said Carol already. Um, oh yeah, I'm glad you said that Chandra, not actually flying, that's really good to know. Um, oh my goodness, there's so much chatter going on. Like I say, you, you guys, you have always lots to say. Um, so they've already had a storm in Scotland by the looks of it. We're waiting for it. My son um, said that we're, apparently we're getting um, three months worth of rain in two days. So that's going to be fun. Um, oh, thank you for welcoming me all back. Good morning from Florida. Hi, Betsy. How how good morning is this? How much in the morning? Tell us, tell us. I can never remember the time difference um, to the different states in America. Oh, she, somebody loves my suntan. Oh, thank you. Um, oh, is that you, Emma? <laughs> you know more about the suntan than anybody else. Um, hi, is it Elise? Elise? I'm just going to say it like that now. Hi, Fanny. Um, any new new names here? Hi, Donna. I think I already said Donna. Um, like the face one, absolutely. You can make a, a green snot face um, pumpkin. He's he's disappeared now. He's probably embarrassed that he's got. No, he's still there. There you go. Okay. Okay, I need to know how much you have actually seen of me doing stuff because I think I might have been I might be faster than um I've been I've been um showing. Okay, I have covered my pumpkin all almost all the way. Have you um seen me do this? Because I've mixed one lot of wool and then I've mixed another lot of wool and for the second lot of wool I added a little bit green into it. So I'm not entirely sure if um, you've all been with me because the quality of the stream hasn't been great um, today. Um, let me just see. Okay. So I'm 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 speaking now. I'm saying something. Am I, I am I all with you and are you all with me still? 
let's um, just see if anybody is saying anything. We have seen nothing. Oh my God. Okay, Snooty Pumpkin. Oh my goodness, you've seen absolutely nothing. Oh, that's just absolutely awful. awful. Okay, Pumpkin goes away and um, I'm gonna start with a new one now. So, after Snooty Pumpkin, um, I've taken out a little bit, I'm taking out a little bit of the white and um, what I, you will have not seen the next bit either, which is if you want to know how big something is going to be, you have to roll it up really tight into a ball and then you get an idea of size. Okay, so if you just have a, a handful of wool and you're not weighing it and you want to know the finished size, then tight, tight, roll it as tight as you can into a ball and then something that looks like that fluffy and whatnot you will get an idea of the size then when you've done this I'm just gonna double check that everybody's with me again now um, okay so now I've got to just uh, change the pixels on here again oh my god you would think that I have come back and get all of this right okay I'm just going to make hopefully make um, this a better quality now. I'm just going to see. I can hear you clearly just quite pixelated. Um, mine not working at all will be watched later. Oh no, I'm so sorry everybody. Um, okay, how are we doing now? So I'm going to roll this into a ball now and I'm going to zoom in um, so that it's really close up. This is what I did earlier, which you all missed because I wasn't live. Um, something went wrong. So I'm going to roll this in and you can see that I'm rolling it, but I'm also teasing the fibers out to fold them round that rolled up ball as much as I can. And then you're going to use your felting needle and you stab that in and out in a straight line to seal that parcel up so that it's now not popping open anymore. Now you're going to work on the shaping. So because it's quite oblong, this one, I need to work quite a lot on these longer ends to make them sort of um, bring them in and make them round. If you're deeply unhappy about the size because um, you expected it to be slightly bigger and it's already turned out quite small, don't panic. All what you can do is you can actually use some more white wool and wrap it around it so that you're building up more layers and therefore you're increasing the bulk. And this is the beauty about needle felting. It is so easy to um, to adjust whatever you're doing, whether it is making it smaller, making it bigger, covering things up, um, changing the look of it. And, um, and I think that's why so many people love the needle felting. So what you see me do now is I'm literally st just stabbing in and out in a straight line to... Um, make this shape firmer and for this I'm using the felting needle which has got little barbs here at the end you can see my fingernails sort of getting caught on it and as I stub it into the wool it pushes the fiber in and it felts them together and therefore it um, firms it up and it makes it more solid all together but it more to the point it also shrinks it in size so um, whenever you stub this now it will get smaller and smaller so I'm just going to check that you are actually hearing me okay and that everybody's with me on board again. Um, <laughs> any news or stories? I haven't told you any. St okay, I'm back on screen now. Oh, I'm so sorry, everybody. Um, oh, I missed so much. No, you haven't missed anything, Jackie, because I'm redoing it. So I'm actually, after the snotty pumpkin um, feature, I'm going from there again because that's what I'm doing now. So what I've made now is I've made quite a loose snowball which i'm going to show you close up as well there so it's now a snowball that i have made and now i need to dress my snowball to turn it into a pumpkin and remember we've got all these different colors and wools and um lovely oranges here and i'm going to take a tiny bit of every single one because i want to make it like a really colorful pumpkin something like that I like it when they're mottled if you like them more even colored then um, obviously just mix maybe uh, one color in um, if you like them like more like a squash look or yellow then um, mix the yellow and the green and the orange so it's down to you this is this is more of a 
of a darker um, color. It's up to you how you want to design your pumpkin and what color you want it to be. So I've got here, um, I've got five colors here. And the way to mix them now is by um, pulling the fibers apart and laying them back on top of each other again. So these are wool butts that we're using. Wool butts are brilliant for shaping and especially if you want to mix wool, they're absolutely brilliant because they're shorter fibered and they're really keen to be tangled up even more than they are already. So they have been carded rather than combed into a long strand of wool and the long strand of wool is called a wool top or the Americans call it roving. So um, we are basically just mixing colors now by pulling them apart and you at some point you will stop because you don't want to create a completely new colorway that's that's just like a single color you do want to keep it quite mottled and flecked like that so now i'm going to go a bit smaller again the bit that you have um, missed is I, I i went on a bit about our our um, earth friendly felting mat and i will tell you about it because this is what i'm using here underneath my snowball and um the best thing to, to describe an earth friendly felting mat that an earth felting christmas an earth felting um earth friendly felting mat is not just for christmas an earth friendly felting mat is for life they're absolutely brilliant they last and they last and they last yes and i will give you this they're more expensive than um a foam mat or any other um felting mat but they are so totally worth it it's a little bit like I don't know because you just don't throw it away you just keep using it and using it and using it they come in a4 which is what i'm using and while i'm talking about my felting mat i'm just fastening on the wool and what the way that i'm doing it is i'm i'm literally laying it out like like you would paint it so i'm putting thin layers over it and um this is going to be the top of my pumpkin this is going to be the bottom and i'm laying them from top to bottom side by side on so that I'm working my way around the pumpkin to um, fill the pumpkin up or cover the pumpkin up I should say with um, the ready mix that I've made and I work my way all around it and even now I'm, I, you don't have to be super precise because there's still so much work happening on the outside of the pumpkin that you can still define it a lot more and make it um, stab it down much more so even though it's it, at the moment it looks like a fluff ball still by the time i have finished with it by adding the stripes to the seams around it um it will be so much firmer and so much neater so it's it doesn't all have to happen in in one step um so the earth friendly felting mat as i was talking about it comes in um lots of different sizes we the most consistent size we definitely always have in is the a4 which is what i'm using an a5 which is half the size of the a4 and um an a6 which is postcard size and uh, there's also an a3 which is double the size of what i'm using and the great thing about the earth mat also is that you can cut it quite easily so if you want to have several um, smaller pieces on the go or you're using it for different colors so you don't get any contamination on there which you you wouldn't get it anyway if you clean it regularly with one of our um, brush rubber brushes um, then um, you you can you can buy the larger piece and just cut it smaller now for part of the pumpkin I'm actually using a little bit green in there because pumpkins have got green patches um, where they maybe haven't been exposed to the sun this is entirely optional you can have yours nice and orange all around I quite like it when they have um, sort of um, less orange patches because to me it looks more like the real McCoy and um, I don't really know what that saying means I don't even know why I've just used it but whatever that means that's what I've just used and so you're covering the whole of the pumpkin up. This goes for all of the pumpkins, whether you add a face or not. You're just covering um, the whole of the pumpkin with um, the orange uh, mix or whatever variegation variation you're doing. And if you've got little carders like these, these are our small carders. We've also got another size. They're twice the size. They're our medium carders. We don't have a large size. Um, then you can brush the wool you lay the wool that you want to mix you can brush it from one brush to another and that will um, mix the wool also um, quite nicely i've only used two different colorways here 
um, so it saves your fingers if you're struggling to do that and then you just use that mix that you've made in the same way just lay it out as if you're painting it onto the pumpkin and felt it on and see how you go with that if you've got a little bit of white shining through I wouldn't worry too much about it because that can also um, sort of be interpreted as a bit of a, a shiny reflection that pumpkins have because obviously yours will be all nice and um, polished when you harvest it from the garden and make it look nice on your harvest table or whether you are carving it out um, for Halloween whichever way and um, work your way around it I've used so little wool this this pack makes so many pumpkins it's 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 unreal um okay so i think everybody everybody is back now um and if i'm a bit pixely i do apologize that's just our wi-fi is really really not very good but we are getting this sorted so we are we are we are um on the case of our landlord all the time to get better wi-fi to the whole of the industrial estate this isn't just us this is everybody here we're in a bit of a of a um dead spot and um, which is why it's a little bit pixelated but why on earth I've lost you I don't know I must have pushed the wrong button probably forgotten everything while I've been away for one week right I've got a nice um, colorful ball here you can see how you can make other um, fruits that way an orange maybe or an apple even um, it's not that far removed I'm just gonna um, go a bit bigger again so you can see what it looks like there you are and what I'm going to do now is I, I show you how to add the stripes. I mean, I call them stripes, but what I mean is these thin lines that go um, from the around the pumpkin, almost like seams, like somebody's pulled it really tight and all the rest squishes out. And you have a choice, and I'll go a bit closer again. You can either use green or you can use um, a, 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 a different color. So I've used all kinds of colors. So on here, I've used um, more of the the, the uh, muted orange that's a slightly dirty orange um, here I've used the, the oh, screen attached here I've used the green um, for contrast purposes I'm using the green here now as well so I'm I'm going to only cover half of this because if you want to see how to make um, a pumpkin with a face I need to leave you need to leave half of it uncovered but if you are making um, a pumpkin without a face then you do this all the way around so do it all the way around, um, but leave half of it uncovered if you're making a face. Um, there you go. So I'm going round now, and what I'm doing is, I, I, you can see I've, teased, I've been teasing my wool out like that, and I'm going to fasten it on at the top with my felting needle, just the top bit. So I've got some, um, some tension there, a little bit of tension. And then I'm going to fold it all the way around to the bottom. And all I'm doing now is I'm very consistently stabbing into that green stripe so that um, the wool almost disappears, almost sinks into um, the shape that I've been needle felting. It won't disappear altogether, but it will make a very distinct, um, it's almost like a peach bottom there now, isn't it? There. So, um, that was probably not a good thing to say but anyway and um, that's what it looks like to me so you now you've now made a um you've now made a um a seam there and um made you can see how distinct these uh, bits are and as soon as you put the next stri stripe there that then you'll see how that becomes more and more of a um of a feature of the pumpkin where you sort of it's almost it almost looks like somebody's um, pulled string around it and then pulled it tight and then all the um, parts that weren't that aren't covered with that string comes squ comes squishing out and you can make um, just sort of counting how many um, of these seams I've made on pumpkins two four six seven on this one um, two four six on this one um, five on this one two four six on this one to um so between five and seven even eight if you've got a larger pumpkin and um and now you've got um a whole bit squished out there so you can see you because the ball is still quite soft 
it allows you to make um, the pumpkin give it these seams because you're just really concentrating your needle so you fasten it on I actually can't remember now what the top and the bottom is doesn't really matter you can still change your mind on that go all the way around and just stab your needle really really very very um, consistently in that into that green line until that green line sinks into the pumpkin inner and um, the two um, sides on either side they sort of come protruding out and that creates that seam um, and then if you make a face it's not it's less than half that you need to um, keep uncovered it's more like um, a quarter or a third that you just don't put a stripe on just enough to have that face so I'm going to put um, another one here by the side and there we go and felt that down so that you get that um, that seamed pumpkin look you might still want to stab into the middle into the um, segments that are sort of between the um, the seams in case you want to neaten tighten them up a bit just don't stop too much you really do want them to stick out more than um, than the green um, seam and if you work on those segments you might just want to go into the green again as well so I've, I've made um, it's already definitely looks like a pumpkin here and um, I've got a little white um, bit peeking out there I'm just gonna cover that up with orange now to get rid of it so that it doesn't bother me anymore there we go that's it so now I've got um, a, a big area here at the front it's just it, uh, I can I could actually put another um, stripe here but I'm leaving it for now so I can show you how to make the face and I'm very conscious that I'm so much more behind in time now because of um, of me prattling around so I'm just going to go a little bit bigger there we are show you this again pumpkin has got um, lots of seams here now in fact I've put one two three four there and now uh, um, if you want to cover the whole of the pumpkin with the seams then go ahead and do that but I will show you how to make the face um, as well before I show you how to make the face I will show you how to make the stalk and the uh, curly um, whirly bits because um, then if you just don't want to know the face bit then you don't have to watch it right to the very end um, but I'm just going to have a quick look how everybody is doing now because um, that was a bit of an unexpected interruption. So, um, oh, you're all chatting way too much for me to read all of this. So I'm hoping that um, um, Emma will flag up if there's anything that I need to... Um, oh yes, no, I, think, I think we're doing well. I'm just not going to read the chat so that we um, stick to a certain time frame. But I'm going to show you how to make the stalk and for that I do need to go small again so just bear with me now. So you've got your green wool there and you um, you can turn this quite easily into um, a stalk by just sort of um, tucking in the wispy bits. And when you do that you're making it um, you're making a smaller patch keep tearing it off the off the mat so that it doesn't get stuck to it and then just keep folding it in so that it becomes a round firm little sausage basically I'm stabbing it but I don't stab like crazy into the mud I'm, I'm really just trying to stab into the shape itself to firm this up and you will have to keep turning it and turning it um, the instructions might tell you something different because there are lots and lots of ways of how to make a stalk so I'm just making it a little bit flatter here on the top part and I'm leaving these wispy ends here wispy because they are, I need those to attach um, the stalk to the top and um, just going round and round and then I'm uh, pulling out these wispy ends here and I'm putting these onto the top of the pumpkin so that they are slightly flattened out and this is where I'm um, st stabbing the needle now into very very near the base of the stalk so I'm pushing green fibers from the stalk inside the pumpkin to felt it 
um, on. And you can have it sort of slightly leaning to one side. It doesn't have to stick out straight. Um, that's entirely up to you how you um, want to position that. But I've made mine um, slightly leaning over that way now. And then um, if you want to use the curls to make the twirly bits, then this is the right time to do it. Now with curls, I've said this loads of times before, don't pull curls if you want to maintain curls. If you if you want to uh, shorten curls, then use the scissors to cut them or very gently separate them, but don't pull too hard because you will curl, you will uncurl the curls and just make them frizzy. So, and then just take a small amount. It really doesn't take a lot and needle felt them right next to the stalk and then maybe let them sort of hang down however you want them hanging down you can uh, position them around the pumpkin as well so they don't have to be all just hanging down one end and um, and basically if you just want to make a pumpkin without a face then you are your pumpkin is done now you can always go over it again with needle felting sometimes you just don't know when to stop but um, stop when it's finished. So for those of you who want to make a face, it's quite, quite easy because you've still got a lot of air here and um, we're going to use um, that that air now to, um, to form a face. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make um, eyeball, um, eye sockets. And for to do this, you're sort of looking where you want your face to be and you're consistently stabbing into one area where one eye will go okay so you're making an indentation so you're creating an eye socket and the deeper you make that the more other facial features will appear so if if i'm stabbing this really deep i can see that here um is a um it's almost like sort of an eye an eyebrow or um appears um, and then I'm going to do the other one, ob obviously in the same line, but a bit further to the other side. So I'm making, um, if you get our pumpkin puck, it doesn't tell you how to make a face. The pumpkin puck itself finishes the pumpkin um, without a face. So it's just a nice, lovely pumpkin shape with um, the green seams. And so I've now got um, two eye um, sockets here. My fingers fit in it there and uh, you can um, add an extra nose and to do this you just use a little bit of whatever mix you feel the nose needs to be and um, make that mix and then roll that into a ball shape between your fingers like you did the original shape but this time it's obviously um, a lot smaller and then sit this onto the pumpkin between the eyes and just stab it down going around the edges so that you are um, stabbing um, a 3D shape that hasn't been felted yet that you're just stabbing on initially to go around the edges and once it's fastened on then you can stab right into it to firm it up a little bit and to, um, to make it smaller if, you, if this is what you want. So um, just stabbing into the nose now you can make it more nose shape. You can have it like a little button nose. Um, entirely up to you. It can be oblong. It can be um, round. However you want your nose to be. Now, if you want to give it nostrils, then you need to do what you did with the eye, socket, eye sockets. You need to make a consistent um, stabbing hole underneath the nose. And you do the same on the other side. So you're now creating two... Um, nostrils and in by doing this what will happen automatically is that the nose will be turned up slightly so I don't know if you can see this very well I'll go onto the other camera in a minute so your pumpkin has got a bit of a piggy nose with um, the nostrils sort of almost pointing up I'm just leveling out the rest of it and before we do anything with the nose and the eyes you can now give him a mouth by again by just using your needle to uh, make an indentation in the shape of the pumpkin going in a um, very consistent um, line so you 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 this one is slightly curved you can make it uh, a sad mouth you can make it a straight mouth it's entirely up to you how you want to do this what you can see is that because i'm stabbing so consistently in one area i'm pulling some of the surface color away so you might need to just cover 
um, your pumpkin again with a little bit of um, um, orange wool over the top once you've done that um, which is not a problem at all because you will have absolutely loads in that pumpkin pack um, you you'll get sick of making pumpkins before you have used all of this up so uh, now he's got um he's, he's got a cheeky mouth he's got a bit of a white patch there under his eye which I'm going to cover up he's got a nose ready to receive some um, green snot and um, or not if you don't want it if you don't want it to be too gruesome just leave it as it is and um, and I'm going to now make uh, fill the eye sockets with white wool and for this I'm using the base basic white wool the basic wool that you've used on the inside just the wisp fill in the eye sockets like that and do that on both sides like that there we go and um, you can now um, decide what color eyes your pumpkin has got if you if you um, get the pumpkin pack and you um, you can use the green to give him eyes and then um, you could use a bit of the tip of the curls to make the um, inside or you need a bit of black wool um, you could just keep them entirely green. I think there is one that has just got green eyes. I just need to find him. It's always hard to find the pumpkins with faces because they're... Oh no, he's also got a bit of black um, in there. But in any case, you can... Um, all you need to do now is use a bit of the, the green that you have got um, to make a smaller pupil. So you don't want to cover all of the white. You just want to make a, a tiny disc in the middle of the white. So leave some of the white showing. If you cover up all of the white, then just add a little bit more white on the outside. And then you could um, add a little bit of black on in the center of the green. You can make the eye bigger if um, if it's easier to for you to felt it because it's quite small, this one. And do that on the other side as well. You can add a little bit of um, green um, if you want to here into the mouth area as well. Or you can add a tooth into it why not add a bit of white for a tooth haven't done that um, if you haven't got any black it looks absolutely fine just with the green pupils and then of course if you want to um, give him sort of a bit of a snotty look then just take some of your curls remember to cut them rather than pull them keep keep the frizz in them well unless you don't want curly snot of course if you just want um, frizzy snot then that's what you need to do and then just um, basically needle felt that into his nose um, for a snotty, a snotty look into one of his nostrils. There you go. He's now got snot coming out of his um, nostril. And if you want to, you can have um, the, the curly hair at the top. You can, of course, have that hanging down his face as well to give him a bit of a untidy and roguish look to go with his um untidy and snotty nose so you can add a few more curls and just stab them in so that they look as if they're hanging into his face and um, that basically is how you make a pumpkin from beginning to end and he actually he looks quite he looks quite sweet I will um, go onto a, a large screen now and I'm just going to show you him a bit closer up so there he is, he's got a bit of an untidy um, hairdo there. Just to show you in comparison to the ones that I've shown you before. There you go, he's got a um, friendlier face. Oh, he's fallen down. He looks quite sweet, I really like him. Just a, just a very sweet little pumpkin with no um, extra features. And there's the one that um, has got the snotty nose that I showed you earlier. This is when everything went wrong, but we've got it back on track. So. I'm going to have a quick look how everybody's doing because I'm running over time and um, i just have a quick look how things are going at this end. Um, oh, I think I think if um, if you all were needle felting along, then hopefully that extra time that I had to take out to um, talk to myself basically that you didn't hear me and then had to repeat everything for your benefit as well then hopefully you had time to needle felt along um, because you had 10 minutes of complete solitude and quiet how nice is that but if you're watching this anytime after as not a live stream then obviously you will uh, won't have had um won't have had that um 
um, what's it called now, won't have had that extra bit of time. There was another word I was looking for, but I can't um, remember now. Um, I wanted to show you just very quickly, um, where have I put it now? Oh yes, it's here. Um, if you like the idea of autumnal decorations, this book, um, my book, Making Simple Needle Felts, is the uh, signed copy. This one isn't signed, but if you buy it from us, you would get a signed copy. has got lots of um, amazing um, autumn, autumnal um, ideas for you to make. In fact, the um, leaves here, that will be a live stream very soon. Um, that will be another week when I'm on holiday. And we're taking turns, Sophie and I. And um, you can even make a little pumpkin girl, like I've um, shown you earlier. That she's got black hair, but you can use the green hair as well if you want to take it to another level. Um, it tells you exactly in the book how to make it. I love this. This is so lovely to do with children because you can actually go out and find real snail shells like that. And then you can um, you needle felt a hump onto the snail and you fit the sna snail shell shell onto it and you can um, glue it on obviously and there you go you've got a, um, a homemade snail with a bit of nature real nature um, attached to it and um, I think in there is also there are acorns there's a gnome um, two gnomes in fact so there are lots of autumnal ideas um, before it gets to winter and hedgehogs um apples needle felt an apple same kind of um technique and um if you want to decorate we said this i don't know if we said this already but the squirrel kit wor works really well with autumn um, decorations and so does the harvest mouse you could even now is the time to go out and get a few stalks of of, of wheat or grain and remember our fairy autumn fairy is coming up um next month and she would look absolutely lovely next to a pumpkin maybe next to um a snail and um and next to a needle felted leaf as well so you have lots of um opportunity to make um autumn decorations it's such a, a bright and colorful um time of the year even though everything's starting to um well go back into the earth and, and wait for spring to come out again it is actually a very vibrant colored um month and um season so do uh, get um your get your needle felting supplies now in all the lovely um colors that um we have and just to let you know that we've changed our schedule slightly um from what it was so this week, Thursday, we're going to talk about, well, I'm going to talk about storage solutions, which I'm very excited about because I love boxes and, and tidying things away. So um, you might not know yet all the things that we do, but you will by Thursday. And that's at 3 p.m. And then we've got um, on next week, Tuesday, very exciting. Again, it's something that we've been asked for loads of times. It's about all the different wires that we have got. We have got absolutely loads, but if you don't know that we have got them, um, this is a really good way to learn a little bit more about wire, give them a good bend test and a break test so that you know which wire to use for which project as well. And that we've already got lots of projects that use wire so that you get an idea of what you could be making too. And then next week, Thursday, we've got the spider and the broom. And the only reason why I'm talking about this now, creepy, creepy spider, um, this is um, all made with pipe cleaner and wool. And you can use white pipe cleaner um, but if you've got black pipe cleaner, then it cuts out a step. Um, so that's entirely up to you. They're both quite um, scary and realistic looking. And um, and then we also teach you how to make a broom. Um, so because we have got a witches and wizard um, tutorial coming up. And if you want to make um, a broom for your witch to ride on at Halloween, then... The reason why I'm saying this now is you've got to get out now. This is in the UK. I have no idea what it's like in any other country. But right now you can harvest horsetail grass. You know this stuff? Absolutely love it. I've worked so much with this. Um, in the days when I used to make uh, wooden knitting needles, I would, uh, I would dry this uh, at the end of um, the summer. And you dry it by hanging it up like this. Dry it anywhere but in your house because it does smell of um we when it's when it's when it's drying i never knew this, where the smell came from until i smelled this stuff and it turns into 
that so that's when it's dry but it's perfect for making brooms and so this is now the time to pick it if you haven't got the faintest idea where to fi find horsetail grass then i think you might be able to get away with just just get stalks of gr of any grass um, or maybe hay or straw. I've no idea. I just think this is the best thing ever. And uh, the reason why it's called horsetail grass is because it literally it looks a little bit like it's got sort of a vertebrae running down the center here. That's how you recognize it. And then these bits are really, they're almost like hair like. They um, So, you know, when you have got hair and you can't run in, can't run your finger in the wrong direction because it sort of gets stuck. It's a bit like that. They have got amazing properties because they've got natural silicon in them, which is why they're great for uh, polishing furniture once they're dry. I think people drink it as tea as well, but you best look this up. I have no idea how to prepare this and um, why on earth you would want to drink natural silicon. I have no idea either. But um, that's, so best look this up. Don't take my word for it and start making tea from this and then blame me if something goes hideously wrong. So, um, yeah, look, look this up. But for making brooms, it's the best thing ever. I can vouch for that. And um, we will be showing you how to do that, too. And then as a final thing, oh, I've got to rush all of this now. We're still doing our mice, um, celebrity mice. And you must, must, must um, participate. There's no excuse. So um, make a mouse, um, any old mouse. Make a celebrity mouse. Think of somebody who you really like. Think of somebody who you think would like themselves as a mouse. Because um, the idea is that you tweet this on our Twitter account. If you don't have a Twitter account, don't worry. Just send us your image and we tweet it for you. And, um, and um, imagine if you could get lots and lots of tweets. You're actually in for a chance to win a £50 um, gift voucher from us. Share with us your mouse on every one maker as well because we want to see the mice everywhere not just on twitter but also on our facebook um page and a group even and so share it with us there and then when you've tweeted your mouse um a few days later just tweet it again just for the fun of it because we just want to see how um just change it slightly maybe add something to it or take something off or change your wording tweet it again and see if um, that will get a, a greater response with Twitter. It's all very short lived. So um, do it now. And if it takes off, then you're in with a great chance to win. I think um, we've got quite some amazing ideas. We're trying to keep this as, as unpolitical as possible. OK, so we we are a really friendly business and um, we don't really engage in politics. So bear that in mind when you're making your celebrities. And um, what else? Oh, yes, there is a time limit to it. You must have all of this done if you want it to be in for a chance by the 31st of August. That, I don't care if that's one minute to midnight, but it needs to be done by then. And any other um, t um, tweets, any other um, yeah, new tweets that you do after that will not count. So that's when we, it's our cutoff line and whoever's had the most retweets will um, win themselves the £50 gift voucher. Uh, what else? Um, Oh, I can't. I think that's it now. I'm, I'm short of reading all the notes that I've got here, which I never have notes. So normally I remember all of this and uh, watch out for our um, hoggy um, kits. They're obviously now for sale. So I've been talking about this last time I spoke to you about it. They weren't for sale. Now they are for sale and um, you can still catch an early bird offer um, until it goes to the full price of £40. You can get it now for £38 and watch out for our special promotion um, next month where we're actually trying not just Homer to get home but we're trying to help the hedgehogs in general so we really we're doing this for a good uh, cause as well because we care about hedgehogs and um, they're amazing animals and our hoggies are just as amazing so remember um, get your hoggy pack now um, pre-order it so that you've got something to do leading up to Christmas in the in the four weeks of Advent and um, Homer is here he's um, he's got some special hairdo today um he's so longing to see heather and holly and huey who of course are all the way back in scotland and he's got to get home so help him to get home make the whole family and you can um, join into their joy of uh, um, reunion and um, there are lots of stories to tell as well and there's so many surprises in that pack that i'm not even going to tell you about because they're a surprise think that's it now i'm gonna go away now i'm way over time and i do apologize if you've all left and gone do done something far more important but share your pumpkins with us 
love to see them um, on Facebook. Tweet them, why not? We want to use Twitter more, so go ahead, tweet your um, pumpkins and um, go on Instagram. Send us photos if you don't do any of this and we will um, share them for you. And um, remember, it's, it's our food for our soul when we see your makes. So that's it. Take care, everybody. It's lovely to be back, even though I've been talking to myself for at least 10 minutes. Um, what's new? And I will just have a very sneaky, sneaky look who's chatting, who's still there. And then I'm just going to say goodbye. So, um, oh, everybody. Oh, it's just so much chat going on. I, I honestly can't all read it. But I'm just saying bye to everybody. Thank you so much for um, for supporting the makers through um, this um, challenging time and I hope we're giving back to you as much as we can as well. So take care everybody. Bye bye.